Peter Godfrey on 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. It is seven minutes past five. In fact, eight minutes past five. Where's the morning gone? 13 degrees at the moment. And let's catch up with Selwyn Manning in New Zealand from eveningreport.nz. We'll take a bit of a look at uh, how the year has panned out for our Kiwi cousin. Selwyn, how are you? Yeah, very good, Peter. I'm back in New Zealand after about a week over in Sydney. And, uh, yeah, good to be home, but it's always good to get over there and a bit of fine weather and things. It was a little bit like uh, suddenly summer had hit. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've certainly had summer, as we had a, a few days of it. How's, how's your weather looking there today over in New Zealand? Yeah, weather at the moment is um, heading for a high of about 22 degrees, Peter, and um, an overnight low of about 15 degrees. It actually feels colder than that for some reason. There has been overcast system going over the Auckland end of the country and uh, sort of the cold southwest of southerly wind going through, so it really feels unseasonable. It might be that I'm trying to acclimatise after being over your side of the ditch for a week, but we'll see how it goes. Um, if we look at uh, Weather Watch, I've actually got an interesting thing about, you know, we're a little bit early for predicting Christmas weather, isn't it? But uh, yeah. they've got a poll on there. What's your main weather thing that you want for Christmas Day? And I can tell you, Peter, uh, not surprising here, 35% of those polls want it to be sunny, uh, 10% want it to be hot, 15% want it to be dry, and 17% want it calm. There's only a few out there that are obviously hanging out for some miserable weather. There's that 6%, maybe it's tongue-in-cheek perhaps, but they want it to be wet. <laughs> <laughs> 1% want it to be cold. 2% want it to be cloudy. Some real thrill-seekers, there's about 3% of those, they want it to be stormy, and others obviously are kind of, uh, you know, aching to be back home in the northern hemisphere or something. Three, um, 8% of them say they want snow or hail. Oh, there we go. I was, I was wondering if anybody would want the white Christmas. Hey, so when, just where, uh, we mentioned yourself here, just a bit of a phone issue, and you're a little bit muffled still there, a bit hard to hear you. I wonder whether we need to try and... I might have to call you back and try a, a, another line again to see if we get a bit of a clearer signal. It's just a little bit muffled. So I'll call you back in a second, so I wonder hopefully we can get a better line again. We'll try that. You know, technology. Back in a moment with Selwood Manning in New Zealand. Hello, Enrico from EnviroTemp. Those using reverse cycle air conditioning, whether once a month or daily, do yourself a favour this holiday season. Enjoy better comfort and peace of mind knowing your system is saving you energy. We'll prove two to eight degrees, better efficiency, or it's free. You'll be more comfortable and save energy, up to 30%. That's two pleasures at the same time. From three ninety nine on a split system, from five forty nine on a ducted. Call now, 1-300-160-620. one 300 one Hi, it's David Penberthy here with Martin Penny from Paint Professionals. Is it true that your dad actually painted for the royal family? Yes, my father was handpicked to paint the Queen's bedroom, Charles and Di's honeymoon suite. Whether you're in Wayville or uh, Morfitt Vale or Springfoot or Glenelg, it really doesn't matter. To us, everybody deserves that same treatment. So get your whole home painted or just a room. Get in touch like we did with Marty and his incredible team at Paint Professionals. Visit paintprofessionals.com.au, Paint Professionals brush with the best. In 2015, Holly's family celebrations were interrupted by bushfire. We didn't expect to see a fire on Christmas Day. My husband and I saw a large plume of smoke just, just over the top of the trees here. Bushfires will happen again. If you live in a bushfire risk area, you need a plan to survive. Because we had gone through the process of planning, we at least knew what to do. Make your plan to survive at the CFS website. It could literally have been here in minutes. Brought to you by the CFS and the Government of South Australia. Craving something tasty? At Subway, for a limited time, you can pick up any two wraps for only $10. Get two faves, or one you love, and something different. For $10 at Subway. Prices and participation may vary. Peter Godfrey, Talking Adelaide, on 1395 5AA. OK, let's try take two with Selwyn. I think we'll be a lot clearer there. We've got you, Selwyn. Yeah, good morning, Peter. That's better. Now we can hear you. That, yeah. The old iPhone 7, was it? Yes, 
uh, the bad iPhone 7 doesn't, it seems to be um, not coming up to the par, does it, with the yeah, sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get a longer bit of string for stringing between a couple of tin cans, so we get a good signal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that might be the uh, the most safest way. Um, yeah, we were just kind of talking about those predictions and the, um, you know, people were going onto the Weather Watch website here and kind of all the ranges of different things that they'd want for Christmas Day. <laughs> you know, just pointing out about 8% of people are wanting snow or hail, but uh, the majority, of course, are 35% wanting a nice, calm, fine blue sky day, Peter. That sounds perfect, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, we better get on because we had a lot to get through this morning. Um, quick uh, look at the currencies. Yes, sure. Um, the New Zealand dollar against the US, it's been climbing against the US as uh, everybody. It's the same as the, in, in Australia, the Australian currency nudging up too, nudging up too. So they're um, sitting at um, 72 one seven cents. Um, that's about a cent higher than a couple of weeks ago. So it's been this creeping up while they wait for the Fed to make a call um, on that. And uh, also the against the New Zealand dollar against the Australian is um, ninety six one eight cents. And if you turn it round the other way, if you're coming across the ditch to New Zealand, you're looking at about a dollar three or a do- almost a dollar four cents in the currency exchanges there, Peter. Okay. All right. And quickly, a couple of couple of headlines making news your side of the ditch. Yeah, in the New Zealand Herald, what we're looking at there is um, a, a lead story on domestic violence, and there's a story uh, if people want to read that. It's on nzherald.co.nz, and it's all about a top athlete's ex-wife. Um, she's saying that right through the marriage there was domestic violence, um, and her quote here, I kept the violence hidden. The purpose of the article really is to show that all families of all different backgrounds uh, suffer and can suffer. Um, the family violence. Mm. So that's a, that's a thing going in. There's also articles there that are building on that that the New Zealand Herald has done about the pressures leading into the Christmas and the festive holiday seasons um, and um, what kind of things people can do to just let that stress go, Peter. You know, some of those old techniques, I guess, you know, of how, how do we deal with ourselves when we start to get under stress and a bit angry? Mm. You know, being mm. focusing on that just to make sure that people have a pack for better Christmas than they otherwise would. So good on the New Zealand Herald for that one. And there's also um, a, a, an article there, trickle of Nat's exit turns to flood. But we can talk about the politics of that a little bit more. It's after John Key's uh, um, uh, uh, resignation as Prime Minister and intention to leave Polis next year in 2017. There's been quite a number of National Party MPs that have uh, said, yep, we're off as well. Mm. So that's what that's about. Go across to um, Fairfax's stuff website. And they're talking about the All Blacks getting quite a wage rise, their salary increase. Um, so that's, uh, you know, uh, you know Half the luck. one where the, <laughs> that, that kind of saying that the All Blacks um, they have increased their salaries, Peter, by uh, ooh, by ten percent or so, you know, into the millions there, and they the uh, that's to keep them in the country mm. so they don't get poached by overseas. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Radio New Zealand, really quickly, uh, Radio New Zealand's leading with uh, raised pension age to sixty seven, says the commissioner. So that's uh, the person who's the retirement commissioner now. John Key is out of the way. Um, there's a lot of push and a lot of upward pressure on the government to do something about the retirement age. It currently here in New Zealand, it's 65. They're saying that's unsustainable. It's got to be lifted to 67 uh, incrementally, of course. Um, but that's going to be a big debate going into election year. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, let's get on to some of the big events that have uh, affected you guys across the ditch over the year. Um been a big year, uh, and we'll get on to John Key shortly, but uh, first one here, um, the back in 2010, that uh, mine tragedy where 29-odd miners were, were trapped inside a mine, that was uh, officially sealed up earlier in the year, wasn't it? The Pike River mine. Oh, it hasn't been sealed oh, it yet. Hasn't um, yet. That's where the big controversy is okay. as of late, Peter. Um, so Solar Gen- Energy is a uh, government-owned company, and it owns the Pike River mine now. Mm. Um, and it, it announced earlier this year that the Pike River coal mine uh, was going to be sealed. Yeah, and you're absolutely right that back in November 2010, a series of explosions inside the coal mine killed 29 miners and contractors. Now, their bodies still lie inside the mine. Over these years, it has been believed that it has been too dangerous for retrieval teams to get in there and take the bodies back to their people. Um, now, despite mine experts asserting most recently that the mine is now safe to enter um, and safe enough for the bodies to be retrieved, Solid Energy has insisted that, that, that the bodies remain there, that the entrance to the mine be permanently sealed. 
Mm. Now, the families of the dead men in there, they're saying that's not good enough, that when the the tragedy occurred, there was a, a promise from the Prime Minister, they say, that no matter what, those bodies would be retrieved. And they're saying that needs to be honoured, um, particularly with Solid, Solid Energy being a government-owned company. They want their, family, their dead relatives back and to be buried as all, everybody else mm. should be buried, they say. Now, that, that what has happened there, Solid Energy has had contractors going to the mine, Peter, or attempting to go to the mine to seal it. And the families for some time now, for some time, have been... Um, holding up a blockade there and preventing the contractors from getting to the mine to seal it off. And reports from that area are saying that the contractors really do sympathise with the families too and they're not going to be pushing that blockade. Okay. Um, so that's the yeah. situation. That's been a big issue here because it's got so many um, uh, kind of uh, angles to it, of course, um, the main one being compassion, of course. And then one of the other big um, things that occurred, um, particularly for the Auckland area, was the uh, change of mayor from the scandalous um, two-term uh, Len Brown mayoralty to uh, former leader of the Labour Party, Peter, uh, former Minister of Foreign Affairs, former Minister of Trade, Minister of Defence, almost a Minister of Justice was in there as well with Phil Goff when he was um, in the Helen Clark-led government. Now, Phil Goff won that uh, Auckland mayoralty, as predicted on your programme, Peter, so there's a bit of a notch up for us. So, um, yeah, Phil Goff is the Mayor of Auckland, at least for the next three years, and uh, they've got quite an agenda there to get get efficiency in there, as they always say, don't they? You know, mm, get, mm. Get, the, get the city moving. I'm sure it's the same kind of messages that you have over there in Adelaide. Yes, those three or four word phrases that are supposed to sum it all up. <laughs> <laughs> they do a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, of course, I guess the big, the the biggest story, and well, the second half of the year was the uh, the, the 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 earthquakes uh, down in the South uh, Island of New Zealand uh, back. What was that? Mid November, mid last yeah. month. Um, the huge, huge, 14th of November, two minutes after midnight, Peter, mm. so was everybody sitting in their beds, snoozing away on the Sunday night, thinking they'll get up in the morning, and go to work. Well, just after midnight, two minutes past to be exact, 7.8 on the um, magnitude quake, bang, hits in that Kaikoura region. So that that was the big, big seismic event for the for the year. And even it gets on you know a scale of being most significant over over the last two centuries as well, with that kind of strength shaking the place around. Last time we spoke, Peter, we talked about um, a drone footage that we, you and I, were watching online where mm. it had ripped the land apart in that earthquake. Not the drone, but the earthquake, <laughs> and um, that a huge canyon had been formed. Now, uh, with that quake, it tore apart multiple fault lines. Peter caused devastation both inland and along the coast around Kaikoura. Uh, sealed off that Kaikoura area from outside um, help for quite a time. Um, the seabed rose. Parts of the seabed went up five metres, um, which is absolutely astounding, isn't it? And the coastline it remains 1.5 metres higher. Than it did, than it was prior to the uh, quake occurring. State Highway One and the main trunk rail line totally destroyed. It's still wiped out, Peter. It remains unusable, and it may be a big question mark there as to whether or not something can be done there. It may be an alternative route as to carve its way inland um, to replug, you know, south of the South Island to the north of the south part of the South Island. So, uh, cost of the rebuild, still a work in progress, Peter. Mm. Um, it could be in excess of around $10 billion or more. The Christchurch earthquakes of some years ago now, um, they were getting up around the $20 billion mark um, and their first estimates were down, way down around $2 billion as far as damage was concerned. This quake is more infrastructure as opposed to being a threat to people. No one was killed yeah. in this quake, but in other locations, um, like we've said in past um, things, uh, Wellington people got one big shake up that night, and uh, many buildings have been, um, you know, destroyed or rendered unsafe. Um, for example, the New Zealand Defence Headquarters building, uh, right in the heart of Wellington, there around the Molesworth Street area. For those that know the city, um, it began to lean and get a real lean on. Now, so deconstruction of that building had to start immediately, basically, and that's um, that's going at the moment. The Inland Revenue Building also was evacuated at the time due to stress and cracks when they were identified there. So Wellington, big shake up in the uh, the aftermath. You know, the after mm. shakes they they're continuing on, Peter. Yeah, and of course, as, as you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, you you felt some of those in up there in Auckland as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is 
you know, for Auckland, as we this they are not accustomed to 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 um, earthquakes. So you know, light swinging, you know, lights that hang down from the tall ceilings and the villas and things like that, swinging around sounds like fifty sounded like fifty people outside banging on the walls. Um, and then you hear it grinding its way up the volcanic rock around the city as the, the city crunches itself back into shape. So it was one big shake. Some people, some of the uh, scientists, are saying that the North Island, uh, in particular, moved out toward the northeast in the Pacific by um, around between one and three centimetres. So you can imagine that if you had a great big trailer full of cement or something like that and trying to move that three centimetres take an awful lot of energy. You know, imagine what kind of power was under the earth and shifting the country. The country, in that kind yeah. Of way. Yeah. Mother Nature, she's a, she's a feisty beast, isn't she? Uh, as uh, as uh, <laughs> well, your now former Prime Minister, John Key, very, uh, very, uh, very um, um, uh, inconsiderate of him to to resign when you were out of the country. I thought very shocking. Peter only <laughs> gave people one week's notice. Imagine if you or I gave our, uh, our people one week. Yeah, notice. exactly, that'd be, exactly. That'd be frowned on and said, "Peter, tut tut, no, you stick at that uh, job there for a bit longer than that." <laughs> so John Key seems to have a rule for his own. But yes, uh, two weeks after that big earthquake, just short of two weeks after that big earthquake, we were just mentioning. Uh, National Party leader, Prime Minister in New Zealand, John Key, announces he's resigning Time to uh, go. as Prime Minister almost immediately, one week's notice, like we were saying. Um, out in December of that job, already gone, um, exits politics in 2017. He was New Zealand's um, most popular leaders, pretty much uh, yeah. or, or in all history there, Peter. So um, he, eight years in the job, um, he peaked in his popularity as preferred Prime Minister of those polled in 2011 when he was sitting there around 60% and all of his opponents were way down in single figures. So, you know, that was some feat there. Um, but his popularity, it began to sink. And in recent times, in the, uh, the same poll, so I'm using the same methodology here, um, 36%, so down from 60% to 36% in November this year. That was just short of him putting up his hand and saying, I'm, I'm getting out of here. So perhaps that was, and this is the supposition here, perhaps it, um, his popularity was starting to wane due to domestic economy um, showing signs of concerns or certainly needing different kind of policies to get it back on track and provide some of that security in the economic area. Homelessness in New Zealand at its worst ever levels that we've ever seen, Peter. Uh, the price of housing is notoriously high here, mm. as we've spoken. Mm. You know, huge, huge differences between what you would pay for a home in, in Adelaide, South Australia, than you would in Auckland City, for example. Almost, almost half as much again is what you'd be looking at if you were buying a home of the same kind of quality here. Um, so that that uh, that housing, the rent goes up, et cetera, et cetera, all of this under John Key's thing, is a palpable indifference also um, between those in New Zealand that are down and out, mm. Uh, mm. As, as you can imagine, mostly probably as a consequence of lack of opportunities perhaps in some areas, um, um, and also with what John Key's government was proposing to do about it, it was very much hands-off. So it may have been the ingredients for that. And now New Zealand's got a new Prime Minister, Bill English, who last week was our finance minister, and now he's in the top spot um, after numerous New Ze um, National Party's MPs um, expressing interest in campaigning for the Prime Ministership or the leadership. Backroom deals in the Nationals um, and number counting saw English go formally into the caucus room last Monday, Peter, and was uncontested to get that leadership in the new Prime Minister position. So it was unanimous, as it was for his deputy, Paula Bennett. A new cabinet will be announced on Sunday, um, this coming weekend, Peter, um, and for, formally uh, people sworn in very quickly on the, on the Monday morning. So that that's pretty much the politics of the year, and it all seems to be crunching up in around that October, November, and early December period where the big events have been happening. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Now we're just a bit short of time here, but we better go on to some of the sport for the year. Of course, well, you mentioned the All Blacks and their, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> new salaries that are, that are coming, but uh, probably well-deserved with a, a huge year for the All Blacks. Yes, yeah, certainly was, Peter. Um, All Blacks reached a new world record with the most unbeaten run of international Class A tests in the history of the game. That was 18 tests. Um, the All Blacks were expected to actually keep that leading run going, um, increasing that record there, but they were beaten by Ireland in early November in a game that they played in Chicago, and then they toured um, up to, to Ireland where they 
a tight game, but they beat Ireland there. They beat uh, France as well uh, in in a very, very excellent game there. So maybe the All Blacks are back on form again, but we'll have to see. There's obviously a long, long season since the World Cup the previous year, uh, and they were... um, Perhaps you know could be forgiven for one game where they've lost out of out of those nineteen mm. games and won eighteen of them. Um, New Zealand athletes notched up though in the Olympics, the most medals ever won by Kiwis at the Olympic Games. Peter, there was eighteen medals all up, including four golds, nine silvers, and five bronze medals. So, you know the New Zealand Olympic team they they came back. Uh, hugely applauded and and some absolute heroic kind of uh, uh, wins that were notched up there and also some others where wins weren't that were equally as uh, equally applauded for their conduct and things like that it was seen to be a good sporting um, opportunity for New Zealanders um, outside of the uh, the men's rugby sevens who who choked terribly um, the rest that seemed to, everyone seemed to be very pleased with them um, and then just in finishing in the cultural singing area our singing sense Lord, she's expected to release her long-awaited second album sometime soon. Peter. Sometime soon, so 27. Keep, keep, keep a watch on Twitter or Instagram <laughs> if people follow. It'll be there. If they like Old Lord, well, then she's uh, she's not too far away. Apparently. Excellent, excellent. All right, so well, that's our last chat for 2016. Um, let me thank you for uh, for your contributions through the year. It's been good to uh, to hear about all the stuff that's uh, happening across your side of the ditch. Uh, I hope you and your family have a, a, a wonderful Christmas, a, 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 a safe holiday period and new year, and we'll look forward to catching up with you again in 2017. That's wonderful, Peter. Thank you very much. And likewise for you and your family and your wonderful listeners putting up with this Kiwi accent and the monotone voice <laughs> this time most weeks. It's all good. Everyone <laughs> listens, listens out for you to say fish and chips. <laughs> yeah, the fish and chips. I'm, I, I, I reckon I sound more Aussie than I do Kiwi these days. It might be your influence there, Peter. But, uh, <laughs> well, maybe it is. And, I, and I'm starting to sound more Kiwi, so <laughs> maybe it works both ways. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think, oh, Kiwi, you do sound Kiwi, Peter. You know, sometimes I hear you say this and that, especially yes. when you say the fish and chips yes. thing. Yeah, that, that, yep. Not too good. But anyway, happy happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, wonderful holiday seasons to you and your people, Peter. Good Bye. on you, so and Thank you so much. And I'll, uh, I'll make sure there's some coldies in the chilli bin for Christmas. <laughs> 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 All the best, Selwyn. Catch you next year. Thank Have you, mate. Time. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Selwyn Manning, editor of eveningreport.nz. Goodness, where's the time gone? Coming up to 5.30. Ann Stone standing by in the newsroom with 5AA News Sport and Weather. Then we can get some more of your calls. Got a few emails here we'll get to in a moment's time as well. Uh, you can join in the conversation. Whatever's on your mind. 822 is the number to call. Or if you want to send through a text or email, text is one triple nine thirty ninety five. And for an email, on air at 5AA.com.au. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Sunny in 26 today. It's 5.30. I'm Ann Stone. Hopes are fading of finding three people lost at sea in the state's southeast. A scaled back search will continue as emergency crews look for any debris or any sign of farming couple Len and Annette Vanderpeer and their 26-year-old son Doug. Yesterday, a boat seat, bucket and plastic tub were recovered off Kingston and police believe the boat has capsized. CFS and MFS firefighters have been busy battling a scrub fire at Penfield overnight north of Adelaide. It broke out around 2.30 after a stolen car was dumped and set alight. And Heidi Davison from the CFS says when crews arrived, they found the fire had spread from the car to surrounding scrub. More than 50 firefighters from CFS and the Metropolitan Fire Service managed to contain the fire, which was in the vicinity of Wommer Road, Petherton Road, Argent Road and the Northern Expressway in just over an hour. Some homes also had to be evacuated at the height of the fire. The blaze destroyed around 30 hectares and police are investigating. The appointment of an experienced barrister as Australia's next Solicitor General is being widely supported. Attorney General George Brandis has announced Stephen Donoghue QC will begin his five-year term in mid-January. And Stuart Clark from the Law Council says Mr Donoghue has the ability to provide frank and fearless advice to the federal government. He is a a Queen's Council of enormous experience. He has had an extensive practice in the High Court of Australia and in constitutional matters and is extremely well placed to take on the important role of second law officer.
Sydney will today stop to remember the victims of the deadly Lint Cafe siege and honour the surviving hostages and their families. Two years have passed since Man Monis, armed with a sawn-off shotgun and a backpack sprouting wires, kept 18 staff and patrons captive inside the Martin Place Cafe. Two hostages and Monis died when police stormed the cafe after 17 hours. There has been a spike in the number of Australians left homeless because of domestic violence. New figures show a 33% increase in people seeking help from homelessness services to escape violent relationships. 